Hey everybody and welcome to another Training Thursday. I am super excited to talk to you today about some of the dumb decisions that we make in business and the biggest lessons that come from it. So uh, if you're joining us, please let me know. I'd love to hear your comments because this is one of the most uh, awesome conversations that we've had in the hub in a while and um, there is a lot of shame and a lot of um, ickiness when these conversations are hidden in the background and we don't talk about them. It changes the way that we show up in our business, it changes the way that we show up as as the way that we think we are or what we are, um, what we value and how valuable or worth worthy we are to make other decisions in our business and it's a conversation that we have to kind of bring out into the open so uh, say hello if you are just joining us. Hey Stephen, nice to see you. Awesome, good timing. What have you spent money on recently that's a bit dumb? <laughs> I have totally in my, uh, in my uh, career as a business owner um, spent all sorts of money on all sorts of things and I have totally had the shame of that uh, in the background. And, and what happens with that shame is uh, in the beginning, it it stopped me from having conversations that I needed to have really important finance conversations uh, initially with my husband. Uh, then it stopped me having conversations, uh, really important conversations with my bookkeeper and the people who were involved in my finance. Then it's it, it, it stopped the flow of abundance and energy in uh, when it came to people coming in and seeing me, uh, as well as uh, money coming into and out of my business. And uh, when I started to release that by having these conversations and noticing I wasn't alone in this, every single person who has owned a business makes dumb decisions with their money because the only, like the, you, you're going to learn five times to 20 times more from a dumb decision a lesson learnt from a dumb decision than you are from making the best decision in the world and then just going on your merry way. So this is really, really important to embrace the dumb, <laughs> embrace the suck, embrace all of the, um, the shame and get it out into the open and move forward and forgive yourself for these things because there is opportunities on the other side of it for all of us to learn from it so we don't have to uh, all make the same mistakes. And it also uh, creates an abundance. It, it unblocks that that blockage and that flow that can continue to happen. Hey Renee, hey everybody else who is watching who is hiding in the background and not saying that they're watching because these money conversations will always bring up all sorts of stuff for us. And us as a profession of healers, we're used to having the conversations hushed hushed because um, you know, there's so many different stories about we've got to have it all sorted and we, there's this expectation that we should know better and there's this expectation that we should give everything away for free and all of the other stories that go with it that are not helping anybody. So let's have one of these conversations out in the open today. So some of my biggest dumb choices come into about five different categories and I have categorized for them for you. So, um, hey, Carla, hey, Kelly, nice to see you guys. All right. Number one, dumb decision uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to running a business online and offline, um, the the two spaces that we can uh, completely make dumb decisions and dumb choices around money. One of them can be offline, and one of them can be online. I'm going to start with the offline component. And um, who here? Please put a like if you have. Uh, if you're a herbalist or a nutritionist who has bought supplies and products that have a shelf life and you were so excited by it because they're like either new or they had like a five plus one deal or like you really wanted to make this amazing product that you thought you would love to make and you bought a whole bunch of that stuff. You might have bought an entire dispensary way before you were ready. You might have a whole wall of herbs that are past their expiry date that are now in your pantry. You might have a kitchen full of herbs, one of my favorites was when I decided I would make teas and the teas were such a great idea and the teas you know it was all grown in Australia in the highlands of Tasmania and I thought the herbs would just be divine and lovely and I could not only make teas out of it I could make like creams in all my spare time that I have 
And I literally had five kilos of marshmallow root and uh, marshmallow leaf just falling to pieces, turning brown and turning into compost in my kitchen. So I have totally been there. I've also had uh, herbs that I just had this affinity for that I really wanted to have that nobody came in and ever used. And so I ended up having sitting in my pantry until I went volunteering over in Vanuatu and I could actually give it to them. Um, so there are so many things that have a shelf life. So if you haven't started uh, your clinic yet, and this is if you're a newbie, this is a big lesson for you. Things have a shelf life. And when it comes to stocking retail products or others, they will be on the shelf as long as you have customer demand, you can continue to put them on the shelf. But if you don't have customer demand, which means they want it, then don't put them on the shelf too early because they will be, from the second that they go on your shelf, they will literally be going out of date. So um, massive lesson when it comes to uh, stock, retail stock. If people are asking for it, bring it on board in small amounts. And if people start to continue to ask for it, bring it on even more. Um, the, uh, the tea scenario, if you are somebody who does enjoy being in the garden, loves being around herbs, would love to run workshops or things, then bring in the teas. But if you're a thinker like me or you're too busy and you just want to have it as a creative outlet, go and have a creative outlet. Don't go getting 10 kilos worth of marshmallow leaf just to turn into very expensive compost. It's really important that you find things that you're in alignment with. And if you want to do something like that, go and do your creative side. If you're somebody who is a little bit more extrovert and you love teaching, maybe you could um, get some in so you can run workshops as well as creating a tea and having it on your shelf so a little lesson from the beginning okay um the other thing when it happens to being offline is what you invest in when it comes to your clinic now we had the amazing emily uh who had her put her hand up for putting in a 900 hundred dollar wall in her first uh rented and leased um uh, clinic space and she had to spend about the same amount when she left that clinic space because she expanded so quickly to pull that wall down because there are different agreements that we have in the uh, in the leasing kind of side of things when it comes to running your business in a bricks and mortar space that you have to uh, have a shop fit out at the beginning and that takes a little bit of time and costs money and then you've actually got to pull that down in some cases as you leave. So it's really important that you're not going and wow, I'm going to create the Taj Mahal and literally six months later you're going to move because you've done so well that you needed a new space. Um, I have been there. I got an amazing mural created on um, on my wall and six months later uh, I actually moved. So I totally, totally um, I totally get that. Oh my goodness. Um, so consider what you are spending your money on in your clinic space. My tip on this one is where can you get a return on investment? Now this is like some of you guys will be going, oh my gosh, she's doing that money talk stuff because I used to do this. Whenever anyone said ROI, I would literally shut down. But if this is you, just lean in and hear what I'm saying or try and hear a little bit of what I'm saying. So ROI is return on investment. Now, there's a difference between spending money. Spending just means it's not going to come back. And investing money. Now, investing money means you put some in and some will come back. And what you want to do is get the return, like a boomerang, a return on the investment that you make. So just like a boomerang, if you throw it, for, you know, with more skill and more speed, it will come back. But if you just like put a little bit, you're not going to necessarily get it back. So what you have to look at when it comes to these, uh, all of the things that we're talking about, but especially the things that happen to be uh, hard costs in your clinic, is uh, is it going to return the investment that you make, especially if it's an aesthetic thing. Uh, if it's a functional thing like updating your kitchen so you can do workshops in it, you can see that you would invest and it would cost a certain amount or it would take a certain amount of workshops 
giving you back a certain amount of money to pay back the investment that you made on the kitchen. So it's really important to think about how much money you're putting in and say, for instance, a wall just because it looks nice versus a wall that splits it up into two uh, very functional uh, clinic rooms and you can rent out another clinic room, that might be a better return on the investment than just putting something up. <laughs> Right, so by the looks of things, we've got a little bit of a issue when it comes to the connection. Let's have a look. All righty. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, we are still having a poor wireless connection. Let's see, if anybody is still hearing me, that would be great and I'll just continue talking. So, please let me know if you can still hear me. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, so, um, Kylie says, my kids are still taking expired prenatal vitamins from two years ago. I love that. I've got these, these ones in the background, uh, the, these ones in the back of my uh, pantry doing the exact same thing. It's so funny. <laughs> and, um, and my poor husband gets these random things. Like we had so much lymphotoxin. We didn't see, sorry, we had so much um as uh, skin supplements from a certain company and we never had any skin conditions come through because I could never stand to, um, to actually treat skin conditions. It just wasn't my thing. Um, whereas adrenal stuff would fly off the shelves. So it's such an interesting thing to have like, you know, packets and packets of this skin, uh, skin supplement in the back of our pantry. So I get it people. I'm so glad you can see me because I can't see myself on the screen. All right. Awesome. Um, Stephen hasn't surprisingly made uh, too many uh, hiccups there except for buying a huge herbal dispensary which was overkill. I know but we want all of the yummy herbs don't we? It's like oh do I really have to only choose like six of them? I want all of them. <laughs> yes it's a really good one not to buy over a hundred different herbs when starting out although walking into a dispensary and smelling that is just like oh one of my favorite smells of all time. Anyway let's get back to it. <laughs> okay so so uh, shelf stability, hard costs, and then we go uh, to testing equipment. Who ha here has gone and bought an iridology camera or a, a biocompatibility thing or a um, like some type of testing equipment? And so I bought a biocompatibility thing and I was never into it. And I know so many of you are. And um, this isn't about what one's better and what, what, what. It, it's totally about finding what's in alignment with you. And I also know lots of people who have bought, say, a microscope and um, they have had a hard time because it wasn't in alignment with them. It wasn't their thing. Um, my iridology uh, torch, it, it sat with used like batteries that never got replaced in the drawer because it just wasn't my thing. It's not in alignment with the way that I did practice my backgrounds in medical science and, and pathology. So the, as soon as I invested in the microscope, I instantly got people coming through and the microscope being paid off. And for some of you guys, you've gone, yep, I'm the one that, uh, that bought the iridology camera that is now a beautiful dust collector over in the corner of the room. But there might be something else that you've got that is extraordinary that you use with every single client and that you, you couldn't possibly live without. And it's the thing that's actually giving you that return on investment. And so it's really important when you are considering what you are bringing to your business when it comes to your testing equipment that it's in alignment with you. Consider what you loved learning about in your uh, qualification. 
Consider what you love hearing about when you go to see a practitioner. Consider what you might study on the side and consider your background when you are thinking about making a big expense when it comes to your testing equipment or whatever it happens to be, that little extra that you have in your clinic. Because if it's not in alignment with you, it is literally going to be one of the most expensive dust collectors that you have. And if you do have one of those, it might be time to sell it to somebody here in the hub or somewhere else so that it doesn't have to be a dust collector, so that it is helping somebody with their health and their well-being as well as somebody else in business. So um, totally find the thing that's in alignment with you. And if you've got the thing that isn't in alignment with you still hanging around, it's creating a little like squeeze on the flow of money and uh, the flow of abundance coming through because you're still stuck with it, feeling the shame of spending a ridiculous amount of money on it and it's literally sitting there collecting dust, not helping anybody. So if you can find a way to find somebody else who that will help and benefit from their business or benefit the, the people that they help in the community they help with their health, then let it go. Let it go. I love Elsa. So um, I had a whole bunch of uh, expiring stock <laughs> because, and I had all the shame of I don't treat those people. And I took it all over to uh, Vanuatu to uh, help in the volunteers, uh, in the volunteer organization that we help over there. And uh, I had a um, bioimpedance set up that um, wasn't driving because I didn't do a lot of um, weight loss. But I did know another practitioner who did. So that's where I took it. And she's doing amazing with that. So wherever it happens to be with uh, you and whatever testing that you use, make sure that you make the investment that's in alignment with you. All right. Then we get on to the online side of things. Oh, this is the fun stuff. <laughs> okay. I want smiley faces, love hearts and likes if you have bought a course that you didn't complete. I, my name is Tammy, I'm a course addict and I have bought many a course that I didn't complete. <laughs> many, many, many a course. Let, where do I begin? <laughs> I bought courses that were n not very much money that I completed, um, c fully completed and went all out in. <laughs> I bought courses that were extraordinary amounts of money that I found out half, like halfway through or even after the first module that I either didn't have time, energy or alignment for that particular course at that particular time. And it just went into the course file. <laughs> so many of us, I can see all the likes and the laughs and the, yeah, right? We are all learners. I mean, that's one of the reasons that we are so good at our jobs is because we're consistently lifelong learning, whether it be through podcast books, um, our qualifications, and many of us have multiple qualifications. And um, apart from going deep diving, which I don't want to do in, the, in our little training Thursday and exploring where that comes from, from a lack of feeling like we don't know enough um, or from a space of, I wonder if this will be the thing, here's the magic pill. Um, there, uh, apart from where it comes from, it is rampant that we go and try and get more information and more information and more information. And so I always suggest finding the information about business more than we do about uh, finding uh, or just as much as we do about finding out clients and, um, and the con uh, considerations when it comes to their health and their well-being that we're always going to do anyway for our CPE points. But from a business aspect, buying a business course is amazing usually if you consider these four things. So I've got a couple of things, right? <laughs> Carla says my inbox is very smart never even opened them <laughs> I love it my, my inbox just filed it too over the, into the corner and I didn't get around to it okay so if you are buying a business course if you are uh, investing in a business coach if you are considering buying business teachings at all there are four things to consider and uh, I mentioned it to Jacqueline uh, on the hub but I wanted to make sure that everybody hears it one, do your research for the person who is teaching the course. It's really important. Just like if you went for your qualification for uh, your 
um, natural therapy side of things, you would all obviously go and research which colleges have what and what they're actually teaching. The same thing happens with business. You don't just click on the next thing that Instagram chucked up at you to tell you about. You, you really need to vibe. And I know it's really like woo-woo kind of perspective, but you really have to resonate with the way that that person teaches because the way that they're teaching you is actually what you're going to absorb when it comes to business. So you really have to vibe with the person that is teaching it. You also have to be in admiration for the journey that they've taken and they need to share that journey with you. If they're just like uh, us tracking our food and where it's come from, you need to know where that thing has come from. There has to be transparency about how that person got there as to whether or not that that's in alignment with you. Just like I wouldn't choose certain types of meat at the moment based on where they randomly come from, I would like to know the journey of how it got to my plate and whether it was in alignment with me. Um, and the other one is, albeit testimonials can be doctored and all that other stuff, but if you know of somebody, just like word of mouth works for us as practitioners, if you know of somebody who has done that course, taking that on word of mouth is a much better opportunity, a, a, a trusted opportunity, than it is to find the next like Facebook ad that got sent to you or the next thing that ended up in your inbox or that kind of stuff. It's really, really important to do your background checking on that particular person, whether or not they vibe with you and whether or not their students have had, sorry, their journey or their student's journey is the one that you want to take. Because I have been in the situation before where I've gone, oh, yeah, she's kind of all right. Yeah, I kind of like that quirky blah, blah, blah. And then I got into this course and it was just... <laughs> and the people that she had attracted for the course uh, that I was in the group with were not my people. And I hadn't gone and done my due diligence to find out whether or not that was in alignment with me. So making sure that you do some research is really, really important. That's number one. Number two is don't fall for the scarcity mindset. The scarcity mindset is, oh my gosh, if I don't do it now, I'll never be able to do it. That's just not true. There will be another course. Might not be from this particular person, although this particular person might offer it another time in another format. Or there'll be another course that's very, very similar. When you start to put your, um, your lens of business on, it's amazing how much you see of the same type of stuff, right? It just stands out. It's like having, you know, a, the square peg, square hole type of scenario. You start to find all the holes that match the thing that you've got. And so it's really important not to fall for the scarcity mindset of, oh, my goodness, this will never be the same again. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and as somebody who jumps quite quickly on things, uh, there is a, there will always be another opportunity, but it might not be the same one. So don't fall for the scarcity mindset check, uh, and check in with your vibe and your uh, intuition as to whether or not this is the time for you. All right, number three, make sure that it's being taught in a method that you can absorb information. Uh, I have been in courses where I have signed up for them before and the information was all written. I don't have time to read stuff like that. I don't want to print out a half a rainforest worth of work and have to file through modules and modules of stuff. It was absolutely pointless. Threw me back to my university days and I had to go and buy a whole bunch of like highlighters and I only got halfway through and, you know, we could create a bonfire with that piece of coursework that I never got around to. And I'm sure many of you could create a bonfire with some of the things <laughs> that you haven't got around to as well. But the thing is, it has to be in alignment with the way that you work. If you're an auditory person, you might notice that you're listening to podcasts more frequently. If you're an auditory person, go for a, a, or like an audible book or go for a way of learning that comes in MP3s and you can just listen to wherever you happen to be. If you are an audio visual person, come and check out videos and see how that person's doing videos. If you are a written person and it all sinks in when you write, make sure that they've got the part that you can vibe with and you can learn with in that way. So do you research into what uh, the format that it's being um, presented in and whether or not you're going to absorb it. Otherwise it's going to turn into a very expensive bonfire. <laughs> I have very expensive lessons. All right. Last one. 
Number four, and this is actually the most important lesson when it comes to overspending on courses, on online courses. Number four is the course isn't the thing. You are the thing. The course and the content of the course, just like any way of losing weight eventually, if a person 100% sticks to it, loses weight, like, and all of those, those programs and those MLMs and all the other things that we all go, oh, but there is people that get results on those things. And there is people that get results on any course if you throw yourself into it 100%. So where is your, and I would say 50%. If the course is 50% and you are 50%, then you've got 100%. So owning your part in playing the role of actually getting what you need out of a course is hugely important and I wish someone had have told me that right at the beginning. Now the courses I threw myself into 100%, I got all the way, you know, 85 to 90% of the way through it. I haven't actually finished any of my courses 100% to be honest. Um, I usually get to that 85% and because I've got so much traction from the action I've taken, I don't actually need to follow through with the, the end bit. But it is absolutely my responsibility about what I get out of that course. And the ones that I haven't got the most out of are the ones that I have literally put in the filing cabinet because I didn't put any energy or effort into them for all of the other reasons, but if I did put energy and effort in and if I searched for the gold nuggets in there and took action on those gold nuggets, I'm certain that I would get some type of result. So I think it's really, really, really important to make sure that when you do buy a course, commit 100%. Now, many of my mentees know that I sometimes put a little veto on them for buying another, another course. And um, I put a veto, especially uh, in the club, if you join the club, then we put a veto on you going and buying more things because if you're in at 100%, you'll get 100% result. If you're in at like 10%, then of course you're only going to get 10% result. And if you haven't even opened it because it's in your inbox, you're not really going to get much out of it. <laughs> and I have all of those things in my inbox, in my files on my computer, even over here in some of these files where the percentage I have put in is what I've got out of it. And um, when I'm going all in on it, and if I, if I somehow something that I haven't been involved in before or, or put my mind to before, if I take it off the shelf and I go all in for two weeks and I do it 100%, the results are like the action that I, and traction that I get from it are extraordinary. But then I'm not doing other things. I'm not being derailed by the bright shining objects and all the other things. So wherever you can take a little bit of responsibility around how that course didn't turn out for you, that's where my biggest lessons have been, just so you know. All right, last one. Oh, no, second last one. Uh, second last one is social media. Now, social media marketing is an ever-evolving, revolving, revolution, evolution, algorithm-driven, crazy space to be in. And at the moment, uh, it is a really great space to throw a whole bunch of money away. <laughs> so just like we talked about, um, and so many of you, like, press the like button if you've got suckered into spending money on Facebook ads, either through Facebook itself or some other random person that's told you, yes, do this. Um, initially, if you have uh, given Facebook ads a go, you, you need to do a little bit of research about how Facebook ads work. It's a little bit like saying, oh, I've given that detox supplement a go and my, I, my whole liver didn't detoxify. Yeah, but you kind of just threw it at it. And when we're talking about uh, social media and, and marketing in general, it's a huge thing that needs to come into it, like all of these other facets, just like uh, detoxification is a huge thing. It's not a matter of taking some St. Mary's Thistle. So the thing about uh, social media marketing is it can be a money pit. And it's really important, just the same as we were talking about from uh, uh, signing up for courses or business coaches. It's really important to do your homework about the people that you are signing up to, whether they're in alignment with you, what type of results they've had, how they ended up getting them, and what your ROI is. So the cool thing about uh, social media 
uh, marketers and virtual assistants and other people in that space is that you can have a contract making sure that you get a certain result from what you're investing. And I didn't know that until I had a very similar uh, experience to Maria in our group. I spent a whole bunch of money on somebody that did like not a lot and didn't teach me what was going on in the background. But then on the flip side of that, I spent some money on somebody who taught me at the same time as doing the thing and it got a better result because then I was aware of what was happening in the background and then I could share it with any other VA that I was talking to or in like brought on board for my business. So it's really important that if you are going to do that, you have a little bit of knowledge around it, just the same as we would empower somebody and not just give them some St. Mary's this, or we'd give them some education and background behind the scenes as to what type of results could be likely and what we'd expect to see. So it's a really similar kind of scenario. All right, last one, bonus round. Anyone who's listening, and I want to see it in the, in the comments, what do you think the biggest absolute waste of time, money, and energy has ever been in marketing my business. What, what do you think that I have spent money and time on? And this was right at the beginning of my business. Uh, and I see it time and time again. And I'm heartbroken for these poor people that go and do it. And it's my biggest giveaway, my biggest tip. Um, absolute waste of time who's going to get the winning answer to this when it comes to business absolute waste of time absolute waste of money absolute waste of printer ink um you know marriage stretching petrol using like oh my goodness um oh my goodness that's an even better answer danielle but it's a really simple one compared to that. So it is absolutely um, a letterbox drop. Don't do a letterbox drop ever. Letterbox drops are just like literally throwing money into the air, money, time, like your people, the people that are here, that you are here to help are waiting to hear from you, but they're not waiting to hear from you from a printed out piece of paper that arrives in their letterbox. They are waiting to hear from you. Um, they are waiting to hear from you in ways that are heartfelt, in ways that are showing up with your fear anyway and giving them your, uh, your knowledge, be it in the shopping line, um, looking at those chocolate covered balls that they think are going to help their IBS, <laughs> be it in uh, the chemist when they pick up those sugar laden gummy something or others instead of actually picking up something else that you could, t you could just literally tell them there. Be it in the school ground out the front of the school when somebody mentions something and you know in your heart of hearts you could help them with a one sentence that could help them. They're waiting for you uh, at your local gym to just give them that tiny little piece of information that they can start to gobble up and then they can expand. They are waiting for you to show up online and share your story. They're waiting for you to show up uh, at the local markets when they're already in a place of health and well-being. They're waiting for you in places and spaces that aren't their letterbox waiting for a piece of paper that you printed out and you like totally nearly threw your computer across the room because Canva and printing and all of the things didn't work and Officeworks wasn't open at that time. <laughs> Please don't do a letterbox drop. They're waiting for you in a whole bunch of different places but not your letterbox. <laughs> um, apart from the amount of kilometres that I walked in places, <laughs> in suburbs that just were not it, where, my, where my people were and um, <laughs> the conversations that I had with my poor husband uh, who was driving me to do these letterbox drops, it was an experience that I don't want anyone else to waste their time on. What I do want you to invest your time in is looking after your 
uh, that shame that you might feel that you've made mistakes before because if you're in business you'll make more mistakes and the more mistakes you make the more lessons you'll learn and the better off you'll be as a human being and as a practitioner I want you to invest your time in people that are open and willing and um, and really want to hear from you and really want to do something about their health I don't want you to invest your time with people who uh, like Stephen just said are arguing or debating uh, whether you exist or natural therapies exist. It's a waste of your time. You could be spending so much more time connecting with people who are waiting to hear from you, are gagging on every single piece of information that's coming out of other countries or online in other spaces, but they want to hear it in your particular flavor, in your particular way, through a medium that you're already on, be it on social media, on your website, um, or in a conversation. Uh, don't, don't, don't waste your time doing all those other things. So um, I hope this has been beneficial to you. And if it has and you know somebody else, uh, another practitioner or somebody else who needs to hear this, please, please share it because these are the conversations that we need to ha happen so much more. Um, I'm really, really uh, moved when people put their hands up and go, yep, me too. Yep, this is real. Yep, I'm being real. Okay, let's move on and do bigger and better and more amazing things to help more people out there and, and move through this stuff that we've got going on in the background so that we can help more people. So it's really important. I'm, I appreciate everybody showing up in the conversations that we've been having in the Naturepreneur Hub. It's so, so cool to know that you're not alone, to know that everyone's human and we all make mistakes and to learn together so that our profession can continue to rise and help more and more people. Uh, if you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, these go on uh, on over, straight over onto there, and they also go on to uh, TammyGuest.com, so that you can see them or access this information or any other conversations like this every week. All right, thank you guys so much for showing up, and uh, I will catch you guys next week for another Training Thursday. See you later. Bye.